Bitcoin, preparing to this meeting is being live streamed. Okay. Okay. So I'm ready here at YouTube and yes. Okay. So now uh, we are live, and um, I think that maybe uh, we should start. So first of all, um, uh, Jihoon, thank you for uh, accepting our invitation uh, to participation at uh, to participating at the Dramatica Festival in Lviv. Um, so it is uh, really great that uh, we start uh, like this collaboration. I hope that in the future it will be very uh, productive collaboration. Uh, so in general with uh, the Dramatica Festival, uh, we planned uh, for a long time uh, this collaboration, like for more than, uh, than two years. And uh, unfortunately, regarding uh, all these uh, like problems with uh, pandemic and so on, a part of the festival going online um, now, especially like the educational events. Um, but I'm really very glad that uh, you are with uh, now here online. And uh, so few words uh, about uh, uh, Jahun, so uh, Jahun, Jason Choi, uh, a computer musician, performer, um, researcher who work in different different aspects of uh, interdisciplinary projects uh, which combine uh, art and science and, and performing arts. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, welcome to our presentation and to our festival. And thank you again for your participation. Sure, thank you so much, Ostaf. And also uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, it was, it was hard to do the actual visit, but I'm still very honored to be invited to the festival and able to be participate and give a brief talk about my project. So, uh, yeah, I'll start. I'll share my slides. So can can you see the slides? Sure. Yes, yes. So today I'll talk about brushing three, which is a third iteration of my brushing projects. Um, the brushing project is a series of sound art and sound performance based on the medium of brushing. And in today's talk, I want to talk more about the DIY element in the creation of art and computer music and, compu and kind of a sound art practice. So before we further move on, I would like to first share about my uh, brushing pro uh, documentation of my brushing project. Piece I focused on expressing internal quality of the brushing activity. Brushing is often referred as a meditative activity in certain cultures, and I want to express that in a sonic way. The sound is picked up with eight piezo microphones, and they are rendered binaurally to the headset. The pressure of each 220 custom FSR sensors control the delay effects. And the reason why I used it was because I often prefer to connect motion with rhythm, and the delay effect was suitable in this context.
So this has become a sound installation, which, uh, which, base, which kind of takes the sound of the brushing activity from the audience and lays out in a more of a multi-channel uh, ambisonic sort of binaural format. Even though this piece ended up at, uh, this piece had been primarily inspired by my second brushing installation piece, which utilizes the existence of spatial sonic entity in a sonic space through audio feedback and the audience interacting with the audio feedback through their motion by emitting sound and also through the brushing activity. Uh, this piece, the sonic, and when I, but I, when I was working on this piece, uh, the feedback part and the sonic entity uh, existing in the space worked fairly well. But however, the part that was kind of dissatisfied in the second iteration of the brushing series was the brushing interaction part. I felt, I felt this really strong need of detecting the position and the pressure of the brush so that I could really utilize that brushing interaction in a detailed way. So kind of re repeating what I said, the third brushing, the brushing three actually started as an interface development, but more or more of an engineering project. I really had this strong functional need, which to create an interface that can detect the position and the pressure of the brush. And to kind of build this implement, implement this functional need, I have selected a DIY approach, which is do-it-yourself approach, which involved uh, building my own custom FSR sensors, designing my own PCB board, and also uh, printing them out. And of course, a lot and a lot of soldering. And obviously this type of approach has some practical needs, which is I was able to save some money, rather than collaborating with another engineer. It was also very fairly easy to fix when it was broken. Uh, and also this kind of control on the interface was logisticalized very easier to work with museums and curators. In the production process of the exhibitions, there are a lot of variabilities. And if having the fact that I have full control on the piece and the hardware system that I'm working with made working with museums and curators much easier and smooth. Of course, obviously, the benefits of working in a DIY method isn't only limited to the practical ones, and obviously it has some artistic benefits. I would like to quote uh, Simon Penny's essay, where he writes in his essay in 2008, the desire to avoid outsourcing technical components or task assets among collaborative groups of specialists typical of technical and scientific research, more broadly as in the commercial world, grants the artist the capacity to hold macroscopic and microscopic views of the project concurrently. Excuse me. This works against the modularity of the black boxing and reliably in a more aesthetically and coherent totality. Now, this really kind of summarizes nicely of one of the artistic medicine of the DIY method is that it provides aesthetically coherent totality in both macro and micro level of the experience of the piece itself. And this enables the piece to have a very artistically well inter implemented interactive experience and avoids the interactive experience to be a naive kind of, just with a bound, grounded on a naive concept. However, the definition of, even though the, the definition and the statement of Simon Penny's had really nicely laid out the benefits of an artist inventor or DIY approach, I somehow want to add up to this view that his view was a little bit more one-sided. I actually think that the art, more of an artistic benefit is that you can be immersed to the material of the pieces you're working on. And this being immersed means that the relationship between the artist and the materials the artist is building with is not just one directional, but it's actually two directional and kind of this interaction between the material kind of relenses the artistic direction. And the creative direction actually arouses in the process of working with these materials. Kind of a direct analogy, I want to make a reference to a more of a research side, which is a grounded theory. A grounded theory research approach is a research method in often in social science and humanities. And it starts to research without any pre-assumptions or hypothesis but dealing with and building a relationship with the subject through qualitative research, the theory naturally arouses. If I quote one of the writings, it says, construct the theories that are grounded in the qualitative data itself. I think this is a really kind of nice analogy that 
even though you start with not a clear artistic direction, working with the material itself can later on find a grounded artistic potential. So if I go back, my project had fully solely started as a functional need, which was to detect the position and the pressure of the brush. But while working on these materials to building these functionalities, I was able to find some artistic keywords throughout this process. I was able to extract the keyword of movement by working on the sensors and trying to detect the movement of the brush. And this key keyword in the, the thesis of the project, which is the brush, I was able to extract the sound of brushing. And this movement element had to develop this idea of a choreographic element, which can be always tied to rhythm in the context of sound, which was transformed into a delay effect, which was actually used for this piece. This decision had led to use contact microphones for my, uh, for my project on the interface to pick up the sound of the microphone, to pick up the sound of brushing directly in real time. Also, my general design decisions were indirectly implied to this process. Kind of my general design process that I have throughout my entire uh, projects are, I want, I like this really feelings, a very conflicting feeling that the audience perceives that the piece is very technical but it does not feel technical at the same time. My project involves a lot of real-time systems, including both in both elements in hardware and software. But in the artistic presentation of it, I really try hard to avoid not having that technical element in front. And I want, and I want to feel this technical object not being seen technical, which is kind of a, con kind of a contrast of pieces like Inferno which really puts front this robotic aesthetic and this sense of technology and roboticism. My actual installation at Love Brushing 3 in our center in Tanabe really reflects this tendency. I wanted all the wires to be hidden to the back. I wanted, I used wooden housing for the body of my interface. I also specifically asked the museum to use a wooden desk and also the brushing was in a brownish color. I want this soft light concentrated on the center, the speakers to be seen invisible by coloring the speaker stands black and also not putting any light to it. Therefore, in this, when the audience experiences this project, even though they perceive that there's a lot of technical elements surrounding it, they, in their visual or actual tactical experience, they don't feel the technology itself. Now, these type of artistic ideas had interacted between the material and the artist himself and not just a one directional relationship. Now, before I kind of end this presentation, I also want to discuss more about the DIY method itself. As you can see through my presentation and also my project, I'm, a, I'm kind of an evangelist on DIY method and I take it as a usual practice. But however, there's some moments in the past couple of years that I felt really strongly that I should be critical about my own approach and rethink about my kind of a tendency of doing artworks. For example, this is an artist named Ho Jun Song based in Seoul, South Korea. He's popular, his, one of his renowned works is called the Open Source Satellite Initiative, which he launched in 2013. And through his works, he built a first set, he's the first person to build a satellite in a fully open source method. He actually shot the satellite to space. After that project, he really became kind of a symbol of open source and DIY artworks in South Korea and also around the world. However, a couple of months, a few months ago in a clubhouse talk he did in March 6th in 2021, he directly said, quote unquote, I really regret pursuing a fully open source project and a DIY project. This really made me rethink about my own practice and made me think critical about it. I also start to perceive my, my due to my personal background, that my practice of, and my kind of preference on DIY could be fairly biased. And also, I also had through interacting with other artists in other domains, I also kind of felt that this DIY method can require high skills and knowledge, which can have, which poses a risk of being elitist and also impose a risk of an libertarian approach. And also there are also there, I also found that there are various modes of working with technology. For instance, in Seoul, South Korea, it's very common for artists to work with small batch mechanical electronic workshops during the Ultra District 
And this really tight network between the mechanics and the artists had created an interesting way of work artists working with technology and developing them. Therefore, even though the artist inventor and a DIY approach enabled a wide range of technology and technical share among the art site community, I also start to question that there can be create exclusivity in the community and then pose a risk of narrowing a range of aesthetics. So therefore to make this artist inventor and also the art site community in general to be more inclusive, I start to think that I should also be critical about my own practice and start to investigate a different modes of technical approach approach. Of course, obviously, I'm not trying to demonize the DIY approach or just simply demonize how technology demonize my own way of approach or working. But I believe that it is always important to be self for an artist to be self critical of their own approach and reiterate it and find new ways that can have a better artistic meaning. So this kind of an end of my talk. And I will, and I will welcome any questions through OSTOP. And please Thank you for listening and having me to the festival. Thank you so much. Um, thank you very much, Jehun. Uh, so uh, the first uh, question uh, which appeared for me, uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, so for working with DIY, uh, you definitely should have some amount of uh, like technical knowledge yeah. about mm -hmm. uh, the different, uh, you know, combining different materials and mm -hmm. working with uh, all these electronics and so on. Uh, so usually it's, um, it's a huge, uh, uh, it might be an issue for an artist you know, to starting with or, uh, with uh, working with uh, all these electronics and so on, because usually like artists have no uh, base specific background and uh, it might be difficult for uh, for them to to work. So how um, how you approach to mm -hmm. to this combination between like engineering work with uh, art uh, thoughts and uh, art problematics and so on? Sure, kind of just my personal approach. I'm not sure if this can be applied to everyone because you know everyone has their own approaches, but kind of worked with me was put hands, but play with your hands first rather than playing with your head first, if that makes sense. So, you know, this, this tendency of technique or engineering, I mean, there's always this strong notion that engineering knowledge or background, or you should have the technical knowledge first to do a technical implementation, which through this project, I kind of slightly disagree with that. Even though you don't have like a very core understanding or very solid mathematical understanding about the subject, putting your hands on it, actually taping it, soldering it and see just how it goes really helped me. So for instance, uh, let me share my slides again. Uh, you see the slides right now, Ostop? Yeah. Yes. So when I was working on the sensor, the one of the core difficulties was deciding this material in the center, which is kind of a capacitor. And I tested multiple materials to find which works the best. And when selecting this material, I didn't have like a very detailed, like engineer level electronic knowledge. But by testing it by myself with hands and just and very cheap materials, I was able to kind of find a way out. So I think kind of an answer to a question is I'll rather focus on kind of just following the reiterated prototype process and not just trying to learn the technology because just trying to learn it and falling in that loop kind of makes the project stuck. So I would just recommend, yeah, just buy things, try things, kind of like circuit bending. You know, you don't know how it's working, but you just find it you just find a way out of it. I think it's also same for any type of technical projects in my opinion. Uh, okay, thank you. So the next question is, so mm -hmm. when you start to, to working on some like DIY projects and something like that, mm -hmm. it's very often uh, for the artists, especially that they have this idea, they start to work on something, but because the process is uh, very time con consuming, like yeah. in the middle of the process, they like lose, um, you know, they, they lose this energy for finishing the project and they start to questioning if this project is really worth to realize because they mm. 
figured how many there are different possibilities and and different techniques and so on so um how you overcome this uh, like the crucial points in uh, the developing of your project so do you also have uh, such kinds of projects that you starting uh, started working on and then you decided in the middle of the project that not it was no no maybe a good idea uh, not because of the artistic uh, idea, but because of the technical way how you plan to implement it in uh, in hardware uh, level. Sure, uh, and yes, the question, uh, the answer is yes, that definitely happened. And I think a better example of that would be my second project, Brushing Two. Since that question raised up, let me share my video of Brushing Two. So I think that would make that would kind of answer the question easier. So please wait a second. It's a short video. Can you hear the sound, Ostop? It's kind of soft. Yes, yes. Yes. So in this project, which I kind of slightly mentioned in the presentation, um, the audio feedback part worked pretty beautifully and I was kind of satisfied with that result. But what didn't work, which is relevant to the question you asked is the color detection part. So you might have seen a webcam at the top and the color detection part was much difficult than I thought. And actually at the final part of the, of the installation, I actually dropped the color detection element of it and kind of put the tone of the sound a little more randomly and kind of focus on increasing the accuracy of detecting the brushing itself. So my answer is yes. And there are some points where I have to draw in the final moment. And, and when this happens in the early phase, I think kind of an effective way to getting away of that is kind of starting having a moderate goal, not having like a huge goal. Like for instance, when I started brushing three, my goal was kind of when I start this project, my focus was to make one FSR sensor, which is stable. So I just focused on that and worked, worked kind of for that on four months. And when I found that, when I found a really simple and cheap design that works stably, then I focused on, okay, I'll make this into a three by three pad and then a 16 by 16 pet. We kind of had this, took this incremental approach. So doing this in an incremental stage, I think really makes, prevents the artist to feel kind of a burnout and not just exhausted by the so many technical hurdles they have to kind of solve. Just focus on one technical element. And as that develops, it'll also raise artistic ideas and directions. I think that'll be my answer. Adi, thank you. And now the question, because you mentioned the uh, brushing two uh, versions <laughs> where you use uh, the color tracking uh, mm -hmm. system. So I remember your performance at, um, at Karma uh, mm -hmm. two, three years ago. Yes. Uh, <laughs> when you use exactly the color uh, tracking system and uh, it works fantastically, it yeah. was really fantastic performance. Um, so, uh, did you also um, uh, 
like continue your work with uh, color motion and uh, uh, generally how you organize this system because it's usually uh, you know when we have the interaction works uh, artists very oftenly use uh, tracking of the um, uh, like the of the motion of the movement of hands or movement of mm -hmm. body using like the Kinect or something like mm -hmm. that. So you use in general like completely different approach. Um, so it, it, could you also say a few words because I know that uh, we have uh, among our audience a lot of uh, students from Art Academy mm -hmm. and they're especially interested in uh, this combination between the visual part and, and, and mm -hmm. sound and mm -hmm. so on. So could you also mention uh, like a few words about how you use this tracking um, uh, color tracking uh, and the maybe just about the idea how how you uh, manage all these things from changing the color to to the sound because it was usually it it's work vice versa you know from the composers mm -hmm. like Scrabbing and other they have colors in their head and uh, and want to present color like a symbol of tonality or something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm, so maybe just a few words about this project. Sure. Uh, for that project, how I, kind of the idea of using. So I think for, oh, that's a really good and hard question. So let me divide it into two ways. Uh, first, for the technical, just on the technical side, because technical side is always easier to answer. <laughs> um, okay, yes. In the first, in the first brush, excuse me, in the first brushing piece, it worked really well, mainly because it was my own performance. If you're, you're doing the performance yourself, you could control, you have more control on the stage, which means I was able to find the perfect lighting combination to make that color detection work. And I, I, I kind of found my way to prevent shadows in my movements because shadows also affect a lot. So I kind of developed my own posture so that it doesn't interrupt the webcam, the shadow, my body. Um, I found this special type of glove that the webcam doesn't detect color. So in my performance, I was able to kind of get these details all right. But in brushing two, even though I used the same technology, it was a audience involvement installation. So the level of control was much less, which I think I kind of missed. And color detection in general is a very tricky technology because color, a large part of color detect, how we perceive color is not because of the physics, but because of our perception. And it is really difficult for a computer model to kind of exactly interpret that. So in an installation setting, the kind of the huddle was in that color detection. So that's my technical answer. More of an artistic answer I would say is, uh, I think I tend to think that way. I really, so kind of, a, kind of an interesting idea I have is, something we feel musical, like what we feel musical or artistic. Like let's just confine in sound and music, like sound art or musical arts, I think, whatever dichotomy you just say. Um, a lot of the cases I think is the, the sound itself is not the core part to make that feel artistic or musical. So even though I, I love, I love to think musically in a very contempt, very kind of non-traditional sense. But when I think of my own musical expression or sonic expression, very often it doesn't start from sound or harmony. And I think that way of thinking, thinking music more holistically, um, really, I think, made me think of these ideas of using brush as a sonic medium tying color with a sound, kind of a kind of a sound material and things like that. There's the, a kind of some texts or some references that really inspired me was um, this, there was some performance by Mark Applebaum where he uses hand signing and he actually defines that as lyrics and singing. But you know that hand motion, even though the sound is a static track that really transforms 
how you feel about that piece, that musical piece. And also like there's this really beautiful essay by Christopher Schmulz about called Musicking, which also poses a really more broader definition of music and really urges us to think music as a verb. That's why he coined this term music king and kind of rejects this notion of music as just a noun or object or text. So I think thinking music as a more dynamic entity, a kind of more dynamic discourse can really open up a lot of poss artistic possibilities. Ati, thank you. Uh, and uh, the next Next question is uh, also we have uh, like a lot of uh, young artists among our audience who are mm -hmm. looking for, for their way. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's like fantastic uh, for me, uh, you know, when, uh, when you see on your different works, uh, like that you have your very special um, individual way of uh, presenting yourself, presenting your idea and like your mm. very special individual sign of of the work and and usually when we uh, go to the young artists works um the you know there are the typical for many artists stage in their artistic life when they tend to copy somebody mm -hmm. or you know they they have some ideas they work with these ideas and and then when the idea when they done it they figured that somebody already did it like mm -hmm. a few years or you know a few decades before or something like that so uh, um i think that um and, and and you know and and when we go to like to your artwork we find some something very very unique and uh, maybe some advices for a young artist how also um you know how you work with all these ideas and so on mm -hmm. for uh, giving the personal touch and not to um, like copying some patterns which might be very interesting for you like to work with something uh, but if already somebody did this project or some kind of the idea so then you just have the play with that but you're not using this in your own works mm -hmm. uh, so how to um uh, personally for you how how do you feel about this mm. individual uh i don't know character of the work and the individual mm. idea like mm. individual style of the mm. artist sure oh that's yeah that's it that's also really really good and <laughs> difficult question uh i would say in two ways first of all i think um uh we are our artistic character or kind of our, our own way of expressions are really, I think, dom dominated by two factors, which is first our background, the process of our individual, and also, but also as important as a personal background is the community the artist is in. Actually, I don't think too much about like, am I really different or am I coining something new? I'm kind of a, it's just my belief, personal belief, but I don't believe that there's something fully original in the world, of, even in the world of art. We are just adding the discussion. And if you find, if, if an artist or any young artist finds their work somehow similar to a predecessor, of their community, um, that's not a reason to not pursue it because that artist is adding to that conversation. Even my work, I have, I have, I share some features of where I'm inspired based on my community. So I think not trying to feel pressured about that, of uh, this trying to be original, but actually actively involving in the artistic community they are in and also just admitting their own background, like where I came from is really important. I have a really nice story about this. Um, when I was in, when I was in, when I was in my master's at, at Karma, uh, you know, a little bit of my background, I'm not formally trained. Um, I haven't studied music formally. I have, I'm not classically trained in what people normally say. I really had this kind of imposter syndrome about that, you know, I'm not classically trained, I don't know how to play piano, blah, blah, blah. And 
I once talked this to my advisor, Patricia Alexandrini, who's an amazing composer and an amazing person. Um, I really admire her. And she once told me that, why do you want to do that? That's not your music. It was, it was really shocking because Patricia herself is a really classical trained composer. She has this really European um, texture in her art, which is amazing, but she just so simply said, that's not yours. And that doesn't mean you have to do it. So you don't have, you don't have to be someone else. And also it's totally cool and nice. And, and actually it's even better to try to relate to your community and adding conversation to that, I think is much more important than trying to be not yourself and just trying to be different. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for a fantastic answer. And then the next question, you mentioned the community. And uh, yes. personally, I, I think that it is really very, very important for the development of artists. But now we have these difficulties with uh -huh. the pandemic situation and so on. <laughs> so, you know, for like for young artists, they sitting in their home, they, they have, uh, you know, all the studies are online. There are no possibility to communicate. So do you uh, also um, like, uh, do you feel, uh, because, you know, there are like two, um, uh, two different aspects of uh, uh, perceiving this kind of situation for uh, so for one people it's perfectly okay they sitting in their homes and communicate via internet with other world but for other people it's very difficult uh, to have no this personal physical uh, interaction um, with um, with other people and uh, also you know there are um, the also like the tricky question uh, regarding the um, academic society mm -hmm. because uh, now uh, you know a lot of critics for prestigious universities and so on said that okay they uh, why the, um, the studies in these universities cost so many because you have you have like online uh, lectures and so on and there are no reason to go there you can like study it everywhere else and for less money and so on but for other people it's uh, also like an important uh, question to have this physical interaction so uh, personally for you do, do you think that if we will still like locked in our homes, there will be possibility to keep the community together or mm -hmm. that we could enter like another type of community or something like that. Because uh, like what you mentioned that during your master study, this mm -hmm. like possibility to, um, you know, to be in Karma and the group when you have the, you know, Patricia Alessandrini, Mark Applebaum, like other people and mm -hmm. like to interact with, I think it's really fantastic, you know, to, to being in this lounge zone, uh, making coffee and talking there. And mm -hmm. uh, um, so what is your thoughts about actual situations and possibility how uh, to, you know how to find yourself in this like different situation with with pandemic and restrictions and uh, not having possibility to go actually somewhere to be physically there yeah that's that's a really tough situation and like being honest like i haven't found a perfect answer for it i would love to know to find the answer for that and mainly also because for me personally, um, physical interaction and having a physical community is very important to me. I don't, for me, like I don't, I don't really do well or I don't have, I don't produce good work when I'm isolated. I'm kind of that person. And that is also the reason why I prefer to be a city. I like the vibrance. I like being around people, talking with them, sharing ideas and things like that. Definitely COVID was extremely challenging. And first, um, it was kind of really hard to find ways throughout. And kind of one way I kind of worked around is, well, I was staying in Korea, FYI, and, and Korea was kind of doing well. It was doing well dealing with the situation, but still a lot of artistic art activities or communities were halted. And, Kind of what I did was, first of all, taking a slight break from a creative practice. 
I, you know, I had to come back to Korea kind of unexpectedly. I just started working, just just more and more work, just kind of in office work in a company, kind of staying a little distance from creative practice and just find ways to keep, just keep my life rolling. Um, and I think that for me kind of helps just kind of expanding the view like not just trying to fill your creative practice in every part in your aspect or time, but just taking a break and find what you can do at that moment. And when you kind of, when, that, when things kind of resume and we can kind of gather together and sh- share these interesting ideas and start doing things, just keep just taking care of yourself and keeping myself healthy and sustainable, I think was just the best answer I had. But yeah, I don't I don't really see a really nice way to kind of keep a community sustainable at this moment. I think the, the, the best I can think of is just being healthy, being well, and also giving en- kind of sharing energy to each other so that we can all go through this smoothly. Um, thank you. And uh, the next question, because you have this uh, like fantastic uh, experience with different type of communities so like you finished uh, your master's at karma at stanford mm-hmm. and the, uh, now you're in Rensselaer, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, uh, so uh, do you uh, like um, uh, have this experience because you know also for for young students it's uh, usually like different uh, difficult to decide Uh, you know, when for them might be the better studies or something like that. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, and for, especially from abroad, it's uh, very often they look like that in some country, you know, if we take the United States or Germany or or Ukraine or Korea, uh, like that all institutions have the same curricula and, you know, in in general, like Mm -hmm. the same type of studies and there are no differences between like going to one university and going to another university. So uh, you have really very rich experiences in in studies in different also in Korea and, and in US. Do you feel that there are uh, like the different approaches to studies in different universities or now it's very standardized? Because it's also like uh, I think now, especially in Ukraine, it's a problem about in general in, uh, in uh, also in other European countries, especially in EU countries, the problem with standing to standardize the whole educational system and like that it's, uh, I don't know, it might be a myth that now all institutions look the same or it is not a myth or so, uh, or all the institutions are the different. So uh, maybe a few words about your, uh, your personal experience with different communities in different uh, institutions. Sure, and then more of an institutional perspective, um, my personal experience was that each institutions were extremely different. Like, uh, for kind of a more direct comparison, Karma, I'm currently in this too, and I'm doing a HD in electronic arts. And based on my experience, both communities are extremely different. They have very different approaches. RPI, RPI is originally an art school, so it has this really rich kind of approach on, on a more of a critical thinking and also a very visual artist type of conceptual and humanistic viewpoint, which is kind of, which was for me, it was a very nice compliment to a more of a structural or kind of technical uh, art practice, which I was intensively trained at Karma. So for me, I think each institutions, and also if we change the country, like for instance, South Korea, they're also a totally different approach on, on, on working on creative practice. So for me, in my experience, each institutions were totally different. They worked, they studied different canon. They have, they have different emphasis. And I think what makes the biggest difference is the people, the faculty there. And as I proceeded, I think, and also I think that was highly related to my process of studies. Um, uh, I, I'm, I, w- I wasn't a really course taking person. I was more of an independent study project based person. And that really made me interact with the community and also the faculty members more. And 
as more I do it that way, I, I was able to see so much difference among the institutions that I have passed through. So kind of my personal experience was that it was very different. It was very different. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the next question is uh, because uh, you already mentioned that, that uh, now you are actually on like, the um, fellowship in, in South Korea. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you have this possibility to work in your own art studio, let's say, or in, in your own, uh, own studio. And uh, how about this? Um, because like you focused on, um, on the idea that DIY projects are great for, uh, have a lot of benefits, um, but uh, like you mentioned that mainly you working by yourself. And uh, do you have also experience with working with other people, like with art teams, when you have your own part and somebody have their own part? And uh, maybe also a few words about this collaboration. Uh, is it uh, like different uh, or is it difficult to like work on some artworks uh, or art events in, uh, you know, in, in, in bigger community? Or what maybe your few few words about that? Sure. Uh, so first, kind of kind of reframe what you just mentioned. I'm, I I do practice DIY heavily, kind of kind of a maker artist inventor approach. But I don't, especially currently, I don't like. I'm not trying to that be an evangelist on it. I'm also trying to be very critical about my own practice, which was also shown in the final part of my presentation, where I said this kind of do it by yourself approach can lead to a more elitist or libertarian type of possibilities, which I think should be very careful, um, very careful. And also that type of approach can lead to a very narrow way of aesthetics, which I'm currently trying to research too. So first of all, I want to kind of reframe that. I do heavily practice DOI, but I don't think it as a ultimate answer for everything. And I'm also trying to recently, especially for this part of the year, I'm just trying to work on really self, really putting, really trying to be self-critical about my approach and trying to refine it about it. And more about the second question, I think a collaborative work, I have done a few collaborative work, uh, including the one I'm doing in Seoul. Um, for, if we kind of elaborate a little bit what Ostop was talking about, I'm currently working, in a, working with a visual artist named Min Young Kim currently based in Seoul. She was in London before the pandemic. And we're working on this project on, on whales and whale sound and noise pollution. It's gonna be a VR-based sound installation, which will be exhibited in November in Seoul. And kind of my past collaboration, I had two, collab I had two collaborations with Yun Park, who's a documentary film director. I did film scoring for her. And I had another um, collaboration with Sario Gollum, who is an amazing choreographer and she has a very interesting idea of approaching movement and body, which I was also highly inspired. And I think the biggest difference between working with others and working by myself is kind of how I deal with my intuition. So when I work by myself, I really try to trust my intuition and kind of push on that. And usually that led to a better result, but in working on a collaboration, working on a collaboration, it seems that the project becomes successful when I'm not pushing my intuition. I kind of try to fight against my intuition. It was really interesting. Like I didn't intend that based on my experience. When I try to go against what I believe, try to go against what I already accustomed to do, as much as I do that, the collaboration becomes better. And this doesn't mean that I'm not just taking a functional role. Even when I'm making artistic decisions, I try to try to not just do as I usually try to do. And that usually found rooms where each collaborator shares and find interesting directions from there. So I think really being selfless and not, not selfless as not just opposite of selfish, but just trying to not push yourself too much 
um, there's this really really interesting like video I saw. There's 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 a really talent. There, there's a jazz pian. I'm a big jazz fan, and there's this really great jazz pianist called Robert Glasper, and he once he once said that he was playing with this bassist. I think I forgot this. I forgot their name, but this bassist once played an amazing solo, and Robert Glasper asked that player, "How did you play such an amazing line?" And that bassist said, "I just responded." So when you're improvising, you're not just express yourself, but when you're playing with others, you listen and you respond, and that's when you make the best line. So I think that kind of kind of resonates with what I'm saying. You're not trying to push your own artistic statement when you're collaborating. When you try to respond and try to kind of kind of kind of jam around it, I think that's when really cool things happen in the process of um, collaboration. Well, thank you, thank you for that. And also, we have a uh, hero question. So, um, do you usually work with uh, interdisciplinary project, or also you have uh, like only musical or only visual projects? Uh, I think I'm. I'm. I also have solely. Um, I don't have solely visual projects. Um, I, mo almost all of my projects involve sound and music. Although they're mostly interdisciplinary, um, but I, whatever, whatever is I when I even either I only use sound or use it with other different mediums. I I think I always try to incorporate some level of sound, even though that what even though that silence. I think sonic elements is definitely a core part of my practice. Um, okay, thank you. Now I'm checking for the other uh, questions. Uh, okay, about uh -huh, about the it. Okay, the I already mentioned this. Um, yeah, and uh, uh -huh, uh, the the next question. So uh, about uh, the the question is about uh, we already mentioned like the if like the different approaches, but. Mm -hmm. uh, question is uh, like how different personally for you it's uh, like the artistic approach in uh, uh, South Korea and in United States so do you find any like similar similarities or it's like the completely different uh, in in the term of contemporary art because in a, like in historical maybe I, I specify the, the the question so uh, because like in historical terms of course the uh, South Korea have the very distinctive uh, own traditional history and so on but in terms of contemporary art I think that when we look to the whole world uh, you know the whole world look the same. Uh, the now we are in, in the global world, but do you feel also some, I don't know, the difficulties with going to, to other uh, like uh, culture and study there or if, uh, do you, or it's, uh, do you feel at, uh, vice versa, the benefits of the having uh, other uh, like traditional background or maybe, I mean, local uh, educational traditions or something like that. Yeah, so that's... I, I, I think hmm. that maybe I, I interpret correctly the, the question because I tried to translate <laughs> it. Like... Yeah, there, there. sorry, there was a few glitches. Is it okay now? Yes, yes, now it's yeah, okay. So yeah, that's, um, that's, that's kind of tricky for me to answer because while I was growing up, well, first of all, I, I had some foreign experiences when I was young. And also after even I came back to Korea, I haven't received art, art or music education in Korea. So to be honest, I'm not highly familiar about what it's like to be trained and educated as an artist or musician in Korea. So kind of my, my, kind of my perception is very superficial. But Still, I think there are some differences, but I think that differences is more keen, more relevant to, um, I think, not, not the education or the culture. Of course, those play a major role, but I think more on the logistics and the structure, like the funding structure and the players, the institutions. Like for instance, um, Korea is more government-based funding system and US is more, uh, 
not government, non-government funding. So I think these kind of the how the operation works in each country, I think, plays a more major. I think that was the biggest difference I felt among、um, different countries. I think how the art or music world works logistically. That was really different. Okay.、Uh, thank you. And uh, uh, so it、uh, seems that I don't know. No, no more questions at the moment、uh, from the audience. But uh, uh, now the、uh, maybe one of the last or the last question. It's、uh, could you tell also a little bit about this、um, your experience with, with this residency because I think it's something、oh, very、yeah. unique. So your your residency. So you are a fellowship of. Uh, 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 Oh, I forget the name. Okay, so、uh, maybe just to tell a few words because I think it's really some very unique way of supporting artists, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and、uh, maybe just a few words about、uh, about that. Sure.、Uh, so it's the re- the the residency slash fellowship that I'm currently working on, which we finalize on first first week of November. It's called Zero One. It's a it's a residency slash commission. Um, run by Hyundai Motors Group.、Um, each year in Hyundai Motors Group, they they recruit around two dozens of artists in any disciplines, whether they're a musician, visual artist,、uh, or in between, even creative engineers or even just engineers, humanists. They recruit different people from different domains. And they kind of support the project and provide a common space, kind of like a share of shared office type of concept. Because you know, every most people live around Seoul, so kind of a shared office is 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 kind of more beneficial in most ways. And in that place, I was it was really good. It was almost for me as a person who didn't wasn't really trained, haven't received like artistic or musical training in South Korea. It was a great opportunity to interact with Korean artists who were fully based in Seoul, and really learn from them, interact with them, and kind of、uh, coin around interesting ideas. And the collaboration there was real was really nice. I was able, like my collaborator Minyoung Kim, she has a totally different background from me. She she was edu- she was trained in Europe. She she was studying in London. She's a visual artist. Mainly, she de- she works on a moving image, and she brought this really interesting. Con- she has this really interesting her concept of the eventfulness of image, and that's kind of what she plays with. Like, she's really interested in the moment where the image. Maybe she she will be the better person to explain, but when the image becomes an event, and what that event, different type, how that type of event. Kind of leads to different type of narratives. She has this really interesting idea. I think, as any residency does, it's it's the community and the interaction where you get inspired, you give inspiration, which gives the materials that you can help you push on. And and the support was really rich. We are provided a studio which we have access twenty four seven, which is super nice. It, you know, it's golden. That's that's the best part. And also, they even I think there's going to be restrictions due to COVID, but still they host a pretty big exhibition event at the end of the residences, which is also very nice to you know present your work and adding to the conversation. So I'm I'm really grateful for their support, supporting my practice for kind of an extended period of time. It's like an eight month commission. So. Uh, yeah. I see, and the the question. So,、um, like, you work on your own project, or you、uh, should collaborate with somebody else from、uh, from the residency, or it doesn't matter. So, you,、uh, yeah. if you want, you could collaborate, or if not, you just work on your own、uh, personal project. You is not、uh, collaborating with others is not mandatory.、Uh, you could if you want. They do had some. They did. They do have some like collaborative project which they hosted, which you could get involved if you not, if you want or not if you don't want to. It's totally up to you. But that part of that element wasn't mandatory. 
Uh, okay, uh, thank you. And uh, I have a question about this project, which will be mm -hmm. presented in uh, Seoul. So, uh, will there be any, like, I don't know, streaming documentation or something? The, the question is when, uh, where the people could uh, watch or listen to, to the project? So maybe we will share it on our Tetramatica web page or a page on Facebook. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. I think that I think it it's still kind of a little unclear because of COVID. Um, the, the 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 curators and the staffs are still working on the logistics, and we are not hundred percent sure. But there is going to be an exhibition, and and we are def me and Minyoung Kim are definitely planning to have a documented video, and we are also planning to have an artist talk but that's probably gonna be in Korean too. Uh, I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure about the streaming elements because this VR and streaming can be a little tricky, but there's definitely gonna be a video documentation which will be showed off later. Uh, okay, great. Uh, thank you. So uh, I think that, uh, yeah, there are, the probably no yeah no more questions uh, here from from the audience mm -hmm. um so uh thank you very much Jihun, thank you for, for having me uh, yeah. for uh, having such fantastic talk uh, here and on the dramatica festival i hope so that at uh, uh at the next festival, uh, we'll have the possibility to uh, host you here in Lviv, uh, like physically. Uh, Absolutely. And, uh, having the possibility to interact with uh, with local community and have uh, such fantastic artist talk and presentation of artwork physically here in Lviv. Uh, so uh, thank you again. And uh, if uh, the audience are very interesting so if if in the future there will be any like documentation or something like that for what works please send us uh, like links to the videos uh, i think that uh, it will be very beneficial also for everybody to to look at uh, at your new installations and new works sure absolutely and also i'm, I'm really honored to be invited and thank you so much for having me and until the end of the talk thank you so much thank you so much Hope yep. to see Have a good one.